Acromensia mucinophilia, a bacterium found in the intestines of both humans and rodents, has been linked to some interesting health benefits. Research suggests that individuals with higher levels of acromensia are less likely to suffer from conditions like inflammatory bowel disease, obesity, and diabetes. Examining the relationship between acromensia and body weight, studies have revealed a negative correlation in humans. Specifically, a higher abundance of this bacterium is associated with lower body weight. Further analysis of the bacteria in fecal samples has shown that obese and overweight children tend to have lower concentrations of acromensia compared to their leaner counterparts. Now, this gives rise to the question, does this mean that taking a probiotic containing acromensia mucinophilia can aid in weight loss? Well, it's complicated. Acromensia mucinophilia is a type of bacteria that naturally resides in the human digestive system. It's what we call a quote, commensal bacterium, meaning it usually lives peacefully in our gut without causing harm. In healthy adults, it typically makes up about 3 to 5% of the gut microbial community. This bacterium has a unique ability to break down the mucus lining the gut and turn it into energy, supporting the growth of other helpful bacteria and maintaining a healthy mucus turnover. It also produces beneficial compounds known as short-chain fatty acids or SCFAs. SCFAs are also generated when gut bacteria ferment dietary fibers from fruits, vegetables, and legumes. SCFAs play a big role in promoting the health of the gut. They're an energy source and have anti-inflammatory effects on the cells lining the gut, which helps benefit their integrity and strengthen the gut barrier. This process reduces inflammation and prevents harmful substances substances from entering the bloodstream, a factor linked to other problems related to obesity, like cardiovascular disease. SCFAs also have an impact on our metabolism by influencing hormones that regulate appetite, such as leptin and ghrelin. This in turn leads to an improved feeling of fullness and a better ability to control food intake. Recent studies have shown that low levels of acromensia bacteria are associated with an increased risk of conditions like obesity and diabetes, even among genetically identical twins. Furthermore, research on animal models, particularly mice, suggests that acromensia bacteria have direct positive effects on both the gut and metabolism. So we've got some intriguing data from cellular and animal studies, as well as some observational evidence. But it's important not to jump to conclusions. The evidence we have so far doesn't automatically mean that taking acromensia probiotics can deliver the same benefits in humans. Cellular studies carried out in controlled lab settings might not capture the complexity of human systems with all their variables. Animals used in research don't always metabolize substances the same way humans do, and their responses don't necessarily predict human reactions accurately. So the key question is, do we have human research trials? Yes, we do, but the current body of research is somewhat limited. In one study involving subjects with type 2 diabetes, acromensia, along with other probiotics, was given for 12 weeks, resulting in a modest improvement in blood sugar levels, specifically HbA1c by 0.6%. However, this study had a small sample size of just 76 participants, and they were also using other probiotics, not just just acromensia alone. In another study, acromensia alone was administered to obese and overweight individuals at a dose of 10 billion CFUs for three months. The results showed a modest weight loss of 2.27 kilograms, fat loss of 1.37 kilograms, and various improvements in metabolic parameters. Again, this study had a small sample size with only 40 participants initially enrolled and 32 completing the study. Interestingly, the study compared live and pasteurized or dead acromensia to placebo. And surprisingly, the dead acromensia outperformed the live acromensia for weight and fat loss. This finding is somewhat puzzling as acromensia is thought to exert its beneficial effects as a live probiotic, not a dead one. 
the only explanation I can reasonably come up with is that this analysis of just 32 people may just be too small to draw good conclusions, and these observed variations could be mostly statistical noise, which also suggests that the study is quite weak to begin with. Beyond these studies, there isn't much more substantial evidence in humans. However, there are ongoing exploratory studies like one in China, examining the effects of a specific strain of acromancia called WST01 on glucose levels and weight loss in overweight or obese patients with type 2 diabetes. While all the research behind acromancia as a probiotic may seem promising, let me explain why I don't consider the overall evidence to be very strong. To do this, we'll take a look at other well-studied probiotics and their impact on metabolism and obesity. I've gathered information on some of the most researched probiotic strains, and I'll attempt to provide an overview by considering the available human, animal, and cellular studies. Let's start by exploring a group of well-researched probiotics called Lactobacillus. Among them, Lactobacillus gasseri stands out for its most consistent association with weight loss, albeit the amount of weight typically lost is generally small and sometimes insignificant. Nevertheless, this weight loss effect has been repeatedly observed in humans, making Lactobacillus gasseri one of the few probiotics with clear evidence supporting its role in weight management. Just a quick side note, I mentioned Lactobacillus gasseri as having strong evidence for helping with obesity, but that doesn't imply it has strong evidence for weight loss overall. It's merely comparatively strong among probiotics. When you compare it to more effective supplements like L-carnitine, Lactobacillus gasseri actually shows weak overall evidence for weight loss. Moving on to other notable strains like Lactobacillus plantarium, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, and Lactobacillus casei. These have shown improvements in obesity-related measures such as reducing inflammation and enhancing fat composition. In some cases, they also contributed to weight loss when combined with a proper diet. However, these strains are often used in combination with others, making it challenging to pinpoint the specific impact of each strain on health. It's likely that these strains primarily support weight loss efforts when accompanied by a balanced diet and may not have significant effects on weight loss when used in isolation. There are also less commonly studied strains like Lactobacillus amylovorus, Lactobacillus sacchii, and Lactobacillus curvatus, which have been explored for their potential in addressing obesity. Unfortunately, there is limited research available and we lack clear evidence regarding their effectiveness in humans. In contrast, Lactobacillus acidophilus, a widely studied strain, does not appear to exhibit noticeable effects on weight when used alone. Some research even suggests that it might lead to weight gain. Now let's look into another extensively studied group of probiotics called Bifidobacterium. Unlike the Lactobacillus group, there isn't a standout strain among Bifidobacterium, and it's more likely that many of them contribute to promoting healthy weight loss rather than directly causing weight loss. Two strains that frequently pop up in research are Bifidobacterium brev and Bifidobacterium lactis. Although much of the research involves a combination of these strains with other probiotics, and a considerable amount is conducted in mice, some strains appear to enhance fat composition and support weight loss. Additional strains like Bifidobacterium bifidum and Bifidobacterium longum also seem to play a role in supporting weight loss by addressing factors like high cholesterol or inflammation. However, these strains likely don't lead to any actual weight loss on their own. It's worth noting that most of these bacterial strains are almost always used in combination with various other probiotics, making it challenging to pinpoint the usefulness of one specific strain. Information about probiotics other than Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium is generally less abundant. This is where Acromensia mucinophilia comes into the picture. Additionally, there are other noteworthy probiotics like Bacterioides uniformis, Pediococcus pentasocius, and Saccharomyces boulardii. These probiotics also show interesting effects related to potentially reducing obesity risk and aiding in weight loss. However, they haven't yet demonstrated consistent weight loss effects, especially in humans. It's worth mentioning that there has been a growing interest and research focus on Acromensia mucinophilia recently. It's possible that we might soon discover more reliable and beneficial beneficial effects on humans. It's just that as of now, the research on acromancia is still relatively new, and we don't have enough to truly rate its effectiveness. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. What do you think about Acromensia mucinophilia? And what are your experiences using probiotics for weight loss? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And if you found it informative, please leave me a like and share this video with someone you know who can use the info.